Showtime, ladies and gentlemen! It is April 22nd, 2013, and this is the Can Kill Emma Stream, day 43, where we learn to make comics together. You join me in my room every Monday and Wednesday, as of right now, and we work on the comic. Tuesdays is tutorials, Thursdays is thoughtfulness, thoughtful times. Today we are going to be jumping right back into part two of issue two of Emma. We're going to be doing some masking. Or actually, the masking is done. We're actually going to be doing some color! Because I'm looking to have issue two done maybe within the week. We'll see. But before we get into that, I wanted to take some time to thank the lovely people, viewers like you, and the lovely people who have been going above and beyond this month to donate their hard-earned cash to help keep the show running. So thank you very much to everyone on this list. If you'd like to get your name on this list, simply head over to Emma Comic Online. Click the Donator tab and donate as little or as much as you want, and I'll feature your name on here throughout the month, and you'll get a cool little picture, which is featured right behind there. You can use that as your little desktop, and that changes every month, so that's going to be really, really cool. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump right into where we left off. We have our <laughs> completed masks here, and we're going to start laying in some color. And uh, some of you may be wondering why Nico is yellow. He looks like he's from The Simpsons. Why he's yellow and the background is purple. Well, that is because lately I've been enlisting the help of my little brother, Deeps, to help mask the comic. That way, it can get be, er, that way it can get done faster. It can be done and it can get done faster. And it has been working out quite well. I really like having his help on this. But uh, he has a very specific technique that he likes to do. He likes to use random colors sometimes. So, but at least he names his dre uh, his uh, layers properly. So at least I can know what I'm talking about or know what I'm doing. So basically, I'm going to show you guys how <clears throat> how laying in the mask properly actually saves me a lot of time with the color. So let's go ahead and we'll do one of these things. Move this puppy over like that. And let's zoom in like that. So once you have all the masks laid in place, it actually makes for a very, very fun time. First thing I'm going to do actually is fix this, because frames should not be that color, Deebs. I don't know what you were thinking. There we go. That's a little easier to read. <clears throat> but I hope... I hope that you guys had a good weekend, and I had a great time myself. I actually met a really awesome guy by the name of Scott Johnson, who is an awesome comic artist and a podcaster for World of Warcraft. He does some awesome stuff, and he does a lot of really cool comics, and uh, he taught me a lot of really awesome things. He's been doing his show for like 10 years. He's been doing comics. He's doing it full time now. He's basically me in the future, what I want to be doing. So naturally, I found it really cool that when I moved here, he literally lives like right down the street from me, and he's a friend of a friend. And I got introduced to him, and we had some manly conversations, and it was really awesome. So <clears throat> so I did that over the weekend. Um, I was really, really happy to see that the auction of Emma, the print number one, the Holy Grail of Emma, sold for a lot of money, and it was really good. And we saved, or we saved, we raised all that money for charity, and it makes me really, really happy. If we do prints in the future, I would actually like to do very similar things. Other than that, I have been brainstorming along with Deebs. It's really cool living back here with my little brothers. And um, Deebs especially, because he's really, really interested in comics. And so I was brainstorming with him about you know, things in the future for the story, uh, contests that I want to be holding for you guys. And we got some good things coming up here with that. So. Hope that you guys will continue to have a great time and enjoy the Emma experience. <clears throat> the Emma community experience. And that is trademarked, so don't try to steal it. Alright. So, basically all I'm doing here is I'm actually just going to start laying in the colors on top of the masks. And this allows me to very, very quickly start, basically I'm just eye-dropping taking it over to this panel and laying it down. And that makes things oh so simple and fun. Alright, we always like that. <clears throat> and yes, yes. 
Kilner is asking why I have to restart the stream. Because I don't know how to actually begin the local recording without doing that. I restart the stream just because, um, like, the music that I play in the beginning, I don't want that to be, like, 15 minutes of playing on YouTube. So in order to start the recording over, I just restart the stream. And that's just why. That's just why. Until I figure out a better way, I'm just going to keep doing it that way. Sure there is, but... Yes. And I don't know exactly how the, the commercial works. I don't know if it plays and then it like cuts in at like 30 seconds later, so I'm already like talking, I've already done my intro. If that's the case, then that could be bad. That could be bad. It could be grounds for me getting very angry. All right, where are our lines? These need to be darker. Thank you. Hair. Cool. All right, so you can see our characters are coming together. Hmm, very good. Color the eyes, uh, the tongue. Should not be green. Should not be green. Let's fix that. There you go. Alright, now skin. Emma's skin actually needs to be a little bit brighter. There we go. There we go. Alrighty. Oh, the brush. Where's the brush? Clip. There we go. Alrighty guys, so what's cool about these, a lot of the panels and pages in this comic is that we've already established a lot of the backgrounds, we know where these things are taking place, so we can get away with very, very, very simple backgrounds, and that makes me oh so happy, oh so happy, because usually what I do is, you know, I have to draw all the detail back there like this, right, like, and these are still pretty simple backgrounds. But I can get away with even less now, which is really good. <laughs> that makes me really happy. Okay. So before we do that, I actually want to check really quick to make sure. Because there are like some simple things, like this line coming through here is representing this sort of, a, I don't know, like half wall. You know, sometimes they have like those half walls that divide the kitchen from the living room. And that's kind of what that is there. So as long as I just create something like that in the background, it'll still look good. It won't take you, it won't kill the illusion. And that would be terrible. That would be terrible. Don't want to kill the illusion. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's desaturate that and set it to multiply. And let's begin laying in some values for the background and then we're going to gradient map. Gradient map. And then we will all be happy. Let's go ahead and do one of these. And let's begin laying in the values. Values. Uh oh. Let's go for some. Uh, oh, never mind. Actually, wait. Maybe I'll do uh, soft first because the chalk brush tends to lag a little bit. So let's lay in our values with the soft brush first. Whoops! Let's try that again. I meant to do this. There we go. Now we're in business. That's going to go right through there. Good. It's fairly simple. And we'll go ahead and have like a little kind of a gradient going towards her head. It kind of pulls your eyes in and you look at her face. Strategically. Strategically placed gradients. You 
Yes, we do have to find a better way. There has to be a better way than to show non-sponsor image. Or non-sponsor message. Please give me some money. Come on. I'll put the sponsor, like, right there, you know. I'll send them a little supporter pic. Be like, thank you, Bank of America, for sponsoring Emma. For sponsoring zombies. How nice of you. How delightfully sweet of you. All right. So let's go ahead and lay that in. Again, let's do another soft gradient that will lead us to Emma's face. And now let's start throwing in a little bit of texture. Some awesome texture. But yeah. This part, this part is when things get real. For those of you who have been anxiously awaiting this part as much as I have. This is when we start seeing some real stuff. It starts getting really good. So I'm super excited to have this get released. And like I said, aiming for the end of the week. Aiming for the end of the week. I think it's fairly manageable. I have to do some overtime, but that's okay. Nothing new to me. It's just like... I like how I'm just as excited to see this and read this as, you know, anybody else, if not more. And I'm the one, even though I'm like working on it and I know it's going to happen, I still don't consider really reading it until it's all done and I can just like sit back and look at the finished product, you know? Until then, it's just kind of like, yeah, just making it, making it, you know, because you're almost seeing it out of order and in so many different ways, you know, without the dialogue or the sound effects. You know, just it's always like an incomplete movie. But then, when you see it for the first time, the director's screening. That's when the real stuff happens. Let's go ahead and put some uh, texture in there. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. Why is it taking so long to save? I don't get that. Hang on. Let me make sure I'm saving this to the right place. Hmm. Aaron got a journal! Yes! Aaron, you are the man. You are the man. Aaron's got it down, guys. You guys need to get on it. Get on that journal. I was not saving it to the right place. How about that? Okay, so I need to save this to... Yes! Okay. Now it should not take forever to save it. Sweet! That makes me so happy to hear that you got a journal. Journals are awesome. They will save your life. They will make you set goals. And you will build the power to the point, you will build the power of this book to the point of everything that you write in here, goal-wise, must get done. It just happens. You start summoning castles and cars and beautiful women out of it, right? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So, um, let's go ahead and compile this. Pile this down, and we are going to move into gradient map. Where is it? New adjustment layer. Gradient map. Gradient map. Thank you. All right, now check this out. I got the right gradient map for the interior. So check it out. I saved it. Now all I got to do is click it and go. Boop. Whoa! They're magically inside, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> Maybe it's this one. Uh, that one looks a little bit better. Let's, uh, let's do that one for now. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and that serves as a baseline for our backgrounds. That way we kind of get a quick and dirty idea of what our backgrounds are going to look like. And then we can move in and start doing some quick little touch-ups 
adding some more different hues in there instead of all just looking like the same thing. Like you'll notice I got like some bright yellows in there for the light. Uh, there's like some more reds as opposed to purples. So what I'll probably end up doing is just going in here like this. Uh, let's grab like this red that's happening over here. I'll start introducing this into the background a little bit more. But yeah, going back to Scott Johnson, you guys should really check out his work. He's really, really awesome. He's done some cool stuff for like Breaking Bad. Uh, he has his own podcast show called The Instance. It's freaking sweet. And uh, yeah, he just basically plays World of Warcraft for a living and does comics. And his family's awesome too. Like he's raising all of his kids to be artists too. They all got their own little computers and you know tablets. And they're all freaking amazing already. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Basically what I want my family to be like. He's already doing it. So, of course, I had to ask him, how? How did you do this? How did you do How can I do that? Tell me. All right, so like adding in a little bit more like these reds. Just some different hues. Gives a little bit more character into that. I'll probably increase the contrast of this since it's like a real action-y scene. She's supposed to be yelling. And this is supposed to be more kind of calm by contrast. Thus creating a funny, awkward moment. And let's go ahead and move on into this frame here. Do you guys see how cool it is? Like how quickly the scene comes together once the masks have been done? So I'm really happy I have Beeps helping me out. Because that means I can get to the colors quicker. And I can finish off the comic, and I can just move page after page after page and get this puppy out. And then we can get started on finishing issue two. And it's going to finish strong, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to finish strong. All right. So I do want, yeah, I want like a light to be kind of coming through here. Uh... Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Let's just put in a little bit of this here in the background. Basically just doing a lot of eye dropping. Because I like consistency. And I like it to be very I like it to be consistent. And it's also very <clears throat> it's also very, very easy. And easy things are fun. Right? Remember, because using the force of the artist is allowing yourself to relax and you watch your body create what you want to create. It's not trying. Don't try when you do your artwork. You must relax. You must let your spirit and your body be free to create what it is trying to create. Once you do that, once you trust in yourself, once you trust in yourself that you know what quality is expected of you, you know what you can do, and you know you're going to get there eventually, and you know you're not going to stop till you're satisfied, then it's just basically that's it. That's the adventure. You just get to watch yourself do it. And it takes so much stress off of you. And when you're in that mindset, I'm telling you guys, it's magic. It's absolute magic. So yeah, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and get on that. Okay, cool. Let's go and put a little bit of texture in here. A little bit of kind of grody looking things over here. Is there like blood over here? Oh, there kind of is. But I can add that in a little bit later with like some hard brushes. Right now I'm just getting the general feel out of it. Good. Good. Very good. Oh. All right. And let's go ahead and collapse that. That's good. I'm just going for it. I like it. And I'm going to increase the contrast of this to bring it out, make it appear a little bit more intense, right? Slightly more intense. Maybe a little bit more like a shift in the hue, maybe a little more saturation. There we go. There we go. That's what we're looking for right there. 
add some more intensity to the scene. She's like breathing fire. Emma Dragon. Whoops! Let's not forget to lock those pixels, people. Do not forget. Let's get rid of those sketchy lines in there. All right, that looks pretty good to me. In fact, I might want to darken these other ones just a little bit more too. Slightly darker. Let's try it, see how it makes us feel. Yeah, I think I like that. Yeah, that's good. And I'm going to put a little bit of light in here. Just a soft brush of light coming through here. Maybe I'll set it to a bloom, actually. I always like a little bloom. Mmm, might be a little much. Might be a little much. Yeah, that's better. Good. See the same over here. A little bit of bloom on these areas here. Kind of helping to pop out the arm there. Good. Merging it. Liking it. Trusting myself. Trusting in the force of the artist. Just straight up merging. Yeah. Straight up merging that sucker. All right, people. It's time for gradient shading. Yay! I love gradient shading. Gradient shading is one of my favorite things in the world because it is also very easy. More eye dropping. Eye dropping, and we take our soft brush. You must take your soft brush. Soft brush on both accounts. And we're going to go ahead and start coloring. Shading, rather. Okay, we got Emma's skin. Emma sun skin. Go ahead and start that. And look at how easy this is. Just go whoop like that. So that was easy. Next. That was easy. That was easy. And that was easy. <laughs> I just feel like I'm cheating at this point. Like, shouldn't be that easy. Should not be allowed to be this easy. There we go. A little bit more light up there. A little bit more light in this area. Good. Then I always like to come in here and kind of blush the cheeks a little bit. Adds a little bit more life into the character. The shoulders too. Just a little. And I kind of like to fade. I like to fade from bright to dark. Usually, like ninety percent of the time when I'm drawing Emma, it just looks nice. Kind of like creates like a cast shadow effect. Makes it really, really easy to kind of get what's going on. Makes it pretty easy. And 
let's go ahead lighten this stuff up. Whoops, kind of bleeding a little bit into the arm there. I'll go ahead and do this. In fact, I think I'm just going to select it manually. Do that. Yep, there we go. That's what I was going for. And I tend to get kind of picky. I get kind of picky. Like I just kind of sit back, look at it really quick, make sure it looks good. Might be a little too picky. Sometimes you just gotta commit. Oh, oh, that's really bright. I like that. I like that. Let's get some more of that in here, please. Some more brightness. Yeah, yeah, that's that's better. Okay, that's it. That's it. Done. Done. No more. Okay, just a little bit. Okay, now I'm done. <laughs> All right. Now let's do Nico's skin. Nico has slightly darker skin than Emma. Therefore, we must make sure we are consistent. Let's give him his blushy cheeks. And all that's happening really with his skin is he's being backlit. So that's not too hard. It's not too bad. Give him one of these. A little bit of shading over there as well. And let's give him some blushy cheeks as well. Cool. Darken him just a little bit more. There we go. All right, let's do Nico's hair. Nico's hair is also being slightly backlit. That was easy. Next, the band known as Dana. Thank you, Deebs, for that. And his collar. I don't know if there's going to be much going on with that. Just a little slight thing there. The dress. Oh, yeah, I did just drop a ton of frames. What a shame. What a shame. It happens every now and then on Ustream. I don't know why. But it does perturb me. It does perturb me. Very much.
Cool. But it looks like we're back now, right? All right, sweet. Good. Clip. Is there anything really crazy happening with this? Uh, maybe a little bit of light on here, a little bit of light there. Nothing crazy. Tongue. Uh, I don't think anything crazy is happening with that, but we'll put a slight gradient on it. Eyes, I think we're good on. Hair, let's do that. Let's do the lightening of the hair. Yeah, I like that. I like it very much. And there you go, peeps. That page is looking pretty close to done. Wow, that was really fast. I think that was a little too fast. It's just because of the simple backgrounds and all that stuff. Wow. It's amazing what that'll do for you. Amazing! I'm gonna make this a little bit brighter as well. Almost like that. Oh, what am I looking for here? I want a slightly different hue than these other things. What am I looking for here? That might be better. Maybe I'm gonna put some more vibrant reds in there. Maybe that'll add some intensity. Ooh, yeah, there we go. There we go. That's intense. Hmm. Maybe a little too intense. I don't know if I like that exact frame. I don't know if I like that exact color. Let's try this. A little bit more magenta. Oh, that's good. That's good. We can work with that. I like doing a good old starburst in there too. Starburst always helps. I haven't had starburst in a long time. I could use some. All right, that's good. The last thing I'm gonna do is actually desaturate this just a Tad bit. Saturate, lighten. It's pretty good. So I'm liking how her arm is coming through here. But I don't know if I can see Nico clear enough. Might want to do something with him, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if that's even something that I want to deal with on the show. So that seems like it's going to take some thinking. And I don't like to think on the show. Only on Thursday. Only on Thursday. That's thinking day. All of the days, it's relaxation. Oh, you know what? I also realized that there's a little bit of a tangent here with her arm. And this arm, <laughs> this is something that we were taught to kind of avoid, like one body part, like going into another on another frame. I wonder if there's a way I could fix that. Hmm. I might end up just like grabbing that arm and moving it a little bit. But we can worry about that later. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one.
on to the next. What time is it? Still got 20 minutes! Lovely! Lovely. Oh, wait. Um, yeah. There's other pages that are masked, but I can't show you those yet. <laughs> those are secret. Those are secret. So for now, let's actually go ahead and go back to page 11, and let's ink that for the next 20 minutes. For the next 20 minutes, we will ink this. Close it down, close that down, and let's go ahead and begin. Alright, so this shouldn't be too bad, shouldn't be too hard. Let's see, is there anything that I'm missing over here? No? No, it looks like I'm doing pretty okay. I am, however, going to use this background, so I don't want to delete it just yet. I want to remember who I am. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, these last few weeks, these last few days, have just been really good. Really, really good. I got a feeling there are bright things on the horizon. You know, you ever get that feeling? It's just like, you can see it. You can see it out there. And it's like, we're going there. We're going there. With Nico and Emma. And maybe some others. That you don't know about yet. <laughs> some secrets. Oh, the secrets that you don't know about yet. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and call this lines. Let's begin our lining process. Oh, this is just so fun. And the cool thing about lining, actually, is I've noticed that my lining technique is actually improving a little. I'm getting better with lining, and I think I'm getting a little bit more like style in my lines. I'm really, really liking it, really, really enjoying it. Having more confidence, again, this is exuding itself from my confidence in my lines and just kind of my skill, right? So I always talk about relaxing, let your skill speak for itself. Don't try, don't try to impress, don't try to make it look like something, just do what comes natural. So I'm having confidence in my own skill and just kind of chilling back, relaxing. I honestly feel like working now is relaxation time and it's really just done so much for me. That's the one common thing that I can say that keeps coming back every single day is that thought pattern of, it's time to relax. <laughs> it's time to relax and draw some comics. And every time I do it, it's just, man, this is good. It's really good. Some of my best work has been done in this part of the comic. And I can't wait to share it with you guys. Can't wait! All right. So let's go ahead and finish that off like that. It's good. I'm looking to get something around that size. Actually, since we're really close, I can go a little bit thicker. Usually I don't go this thick with the lines. I usually try to stick around like the 30 mark around that thickness, which is about what we're hitting. So that's good. Moving on. But well, what's interesting is that you can hit the thickness of a 30 brush by picking like a 50 brush and just pressing really lightly. And again, saving your wrist, saving your life, saving your future. I, I don't know. <laughs> Emma screaming. Nico vaporizes into a starburst of blood. A starburst of blood. <laughs> Fire breathing, nuclear breath, Emma. I like that. You can see that. The Godzilla, Emma. <laughs> Shooting nuclear breath. You gotta watch out. That's why she brushes her teeth, to take care of that nuclear breath. It's dangerous. Don't interrupt her toothbrushing process. She will kill you. 
She will kill you. And brush your teeth. Brush your teeth. Uh, maybe you want to watch Rush Hour really badly. I missed that movie. Alrighty. But see, look at that hand. It's just like, yeah, that's a hand. I like it. That's a naturally drawn hand. So much confidence. So much confidence in that hand. Too much confidence. We must strike him down. We must strike him down. All right. So we got 20 minutes to relax, talk about things. Let's see, what did I write in my journal as of late? Something I'm going to be talking to you guys on Thoughtful Thursday is actually more of, as it stands right now, I feel like I'm happening upon more and more cool things that you come across when you start trusting in your own spirit, your own force, your own skill, the, using the force of the artist, as I call it. And uh, I want to talk a little bit more about that this Thursday. Or actually, no, wait. I think I was talking about doing that on Tuesday. I think I'm talking about doing that tomorrow. I think I might do a tutorial on teaching you to wield your lightsabers, and I'll train you with a little ball that like hovers around and shoots little lasers at you. I'm going to train you to start you know, doing stuff like this and like blocking the lasers. And you got your blindfold on so you can't see anything. And you're just like, choo, choo, choo. And then you shoot the laser back at the ball, blows it up. And then you know that you have accomplished using the force of the artist. And I think I want to talk about that tomorrow. Kind of what that means to me. What it means to trust yourself artistically. What it means to follow, you know, your gut. Your gut instinct. I think that's really what it comes down to. When you're doing art, when you're doing comics, especially sequential art, because... You gotta come up with frame after frame after frame after frame after frame, layout after layout after layout, do all these characters' expressions. And like I said, oftentimes I'll draw the character just as like a little smiley face or whatever, just like a really, really quick rendition of them. And there's more attitude and character in that, like something that I drew in like three seconds, than after I go through all the layout, get it all laid out, like all of the perfect little shapes and anatomy and all that stuff. Like it stiffens up. It really did. It really does. And <laughs> it really did, and it really does. But, um, yeah, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about what it means to, like, where that comes from. Why is it that you're able to convey more emotion in a three-second sketch of a person than you can oftentimes if you spend three hours on it? And, uh, yeah, I want to kind of teach you how to basically get from that sketch with all the emotion and then take it to the point where it's finished and it still retains all the emotion that the original sketch had. Uh, to the best of my ability. Again, I'm still a young Padawan. I'm still learning myself. But I will do my best to teach you guys. And once the, once the face is like locked in, like once I have an expression locked in, I usually try to just like almost trace the exact lines that were left before. Because they look so good. And I don't like to... I used to just darken the actual sketch lines and then clean them up. But that just ended up taking too long. So I was like, alright. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to line exactly what the layout was. Exactly. You know what I mean? Sometimes there's like weird lines in places that I wouldn't normally think to put them. But I will omit them in the ink and then I'll look back, you know, on the original sketch and it's missing something. And it's missing that weird, obscure line that I thought didn't matter. It's really, really weird. So yeah, I really like this frame with Nico. So cute. He's got Bambi eyes. He's got Bambi eyes. Maybe I should do the thing in the animes where they do this thing, like the, the little stars. <laughs> yeah, no. no. <laughs> My comic is not that anime. It's anime inspired, but it's not that anime. Alright, so let's go ahead and go back and check this. How are we doing? Pretty good. All right, nose, got that good. 
All right, guys, we're going to go for about two more minutes, and then I'm going to ask you to load up your catapults and cast them over the castle walls, all right? So get your questions ready. Write them down, your newly found journals. Be ready to ask them to me. And then we will end day 43 of the Kane Kale Emma stream. And then I'm probably going to go downstairs and eat some more food because I ate way too quick and I didn't get enough. I need more, more food. And I must take my vitamins. My healthy big boy vitamins. Comic artist vitamins. Maybe that's what's giving me the force. Like these supplements I've been taking. I swear, they like... They like curb my appetite. I'm not as hungry all the time. I feel more energetic. I feel more energized. I feel happier. I don't know. I think there's something special about these things. And now they are giving me hyperkinetic powers to transcribe my thoughts onto paper in the form of comics with the utmost accuracy and precision and skill. Or maybe I'm just finally learning how to relax and enjoy what I do. Since I realize I'm going to be doing this now for the rest of my life, I really know. Like, unlike my other job, I now know that I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. And I'm actually okay with that. I'm okay with that. I love putting the hours into my own project. I love working for other people, too. Don't get me wrong. I love working on contract, and doing the whole full-time thing, work professionally. I really did enjoy that. But... It can't even touch what it feels like to make your own product, make your own characters, and tell your own story. And then have people draw fan art. You awesome people out there drawing fan art of it. Oh, it just makes me so happy. It brings a tear to the eye. And it makes me want to do contests and give away free things, which I will be. Which I will be very soon. Very, very soon. I just have to get all of like the... Like, I really need to, like, sit down and figure it out. i got to use my journal, and i got to sit down and figure it out. It's like, okay, well, first place, second place, third place, get these. Runner-ups get this. Honorable mentions. What kind of things can I give away? You know, what am I going to do for the thing, for the people that win? You know, so. And, like, where are they going to submit? You know, where are they going to submit their artwork? Where are they going to submit everything? So i got to get all that stuff figured out. And I'm sure it shouldn't be, it, it shouldn't be that hard to do. But, uh, yeah, I just need to sit down and figure it out. And I will very soon. Soon. Yeah, baby. Yeah, buddy. All right, people. It's time to chuck your questions over the castle walls, send them back to you on a bed of rice. Okay? Send them over. I'm going to continue lining this. I'll answer your questions, and then we'll end day 43. Of the can kill Emma stream. I'm gonna pull up the epic outro music while we do that. While I look at you suggestively. By the way, I did find a candle. I usually like to burn candles during Thoughtful Thursday because it's supposed to be more intimate. I invite you into my room with me to carry on a conversation about life and all that stuff. And I really liked having a candle, so I went and got myself one, found myself one, and yeah, we'll be having that this Thursday. So, better watch out! Watch out! Back to this. Okay. Kilner says, I tried the 2634 rule in my painting studio today, and it was awesome. Yes! Yes! Thank you, Kilner. I'm so happy you tried it out. So happy you tried it out. And it works, doesn't it? Isn't it weird how... Like the 2634 rule, for those of you who don't know what that is, is resting more than you actually work, right? You take 26 minutes and you really, really pour it on. Basically, you're going like pedal to the metal. You're just like bam, 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 just laying stuff down. You set a timer on something like your little smartphone or whatever. You got one of those little egg wind up old school timers. Those work too. And then at the end of 26 minutes, you force yourself to relax. You force yourself to stop, take a break. And for the next 34 minutes out of the hour, you actually rest. And what this allows you to do is it makes you take a step back and you look at exactly what you're doing. You kind of like, it's almost like you're planning in your head for those next steps as opposed to, because you can't work and plan your next steps at the same time. But here's what happens. When you take 34 minutes, when you try to force yourself to do 34 minutes of rest, 
you'll naturally just kind of like start be like, oh, I had this idea. And you'll kind of go back in and kind of like do this. And you'll be like, oh, no, wait, I'm resting. Got to rest. And you'll kind of keep looking, keep looking, and be like, oh, got this other idea. Oh, well, I better just make a quick little note about that. And then slowly but surely, before that 34 minutes, this is what happens with me. I actually kind of just like start working without even noticing it. And then the time's up. It's like, okay, 26 minutes, time to go, 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 go. And you got all this stuff just ready to go. You got all these plans, and you just pound through that 26 minutes. And that's 34 minutes of rest again. And then you get up, and like maybe do some chores, rest, stretch your wrist. You know, this will actually prevent carpal tunnel and all the terrible things that are associated with back problems. It'll eliminate all of the risks of that, especially when you're an artist. And uh, even doing physical labor, uh, they recommend doing this. This is a philosophy that was taught to me, or actually not taught to me, but I heard it from a book called Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. And he talks about these guys that had to move like these giant like iron ore bar things. And they were able to move like four times as much, resting more than they were working. I don't know exactly how it works. It's still a mystery to me, but you should try it out for yourself. All right. Next up. Kilner is asking, how do you make sound effect words? Buy or use a font? Okay. Um, this is actually a good question, Kilner, and I'll show you how I make sound effects. It's actually very, very fun. A general way that I like to make sound effects is blending styles, right? Or blending, yeah, is it blending styles? Blending options? Basically, you create a layer, and then you go to right here. Layer style, that's what it is. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go to stroke, right? And I'll go, let's say, uh, let's do like a 10 pixel stroke of black. And this is just a quick way to show you how I would go about making a sound effect. So I do color, overlay, and stroke. Now what I do is I take my Reptar brush, and I go in here, and I'll start laying stuff out like this. I'll just go like, bam, right? And because of the Reptar brush, it actually creates it creates the texture for me, almost. And then I can go back in here with like the eraser. I can start erasing things out. You know, kind of like doing stuff like this. Say I want that M to kind of look like that, or I want some sort of weird texture coming through here. And the stroke kind of automatically creates some cool, I don't know, just like creates a cool style on it. In fact, let's put that in front of everything so that way it shows up properly. Okay, so you can see that. And say once you've got something like that, say BAM! You can go into things like, you can do gradient overlay actually. Gradient overlay is pretty cool too. So this allows you to basically pick your colors. So you go, okay, I want the bottom color to be red, and I want that to gradate to a orange. See, this is kind of what I did with the final panel of issue one with the bikers coming in. I did that. And then you can change the stroke here as well. You can you know, make that more like red, all those kinds of things. And then you can adjust the stroke accordingly and you can do all those kinds of things. So that's usually how I like to do them. That's how I like to do uh, different kinds of words and different kinds of sound effects. Uh, I've seen people that use fonts, but to be honest, I like to try to avoid using other people's fonts or as many like possibly copyrighted fonts as possible. I mean, I use a free font from Blambot for the chat bubbles. So I figured, all right, well, worst comes to worst and like something happens and they say they want me to, like, that I can't use that font, then all I gotta do is just go back and change those. But how terrible would it be if I used another one of their fonts and be like, yeah, you gotta basically redo everything and all that stuff. So I don't know. Plus, I kind of like it. I like making my own fonts. I think it's really, really fun. You kind of get into it, and you can kind of create like sloping things. Like a lot of my sound effects have like a curve or a flow to them. They kind of mimic whatever action they're describing. So uh, I like doing stuff like that. And you can't do that stuff with fonts. Next up, <clears throat> hmm, Helgen Warfare is asking with a brand new awesome icon. I like the goggles, Helgen. <laughs> He's asking, do you have any tips if you have an idea in your head but can't get it out on paper? Hmm. Let's see. Well, yeah. 
Like, if you're talking about, oh, I got this idea, but I don't have maybe the time or, like, the skill to, like, put this down on paper, like, oftentimes I would have all these great ideas about, like, this is before I knew how to draw backgrounds and cities and mountains and all this stuff. I didn't know crap about backgrounds. But I'd have all these really, really awesome, like, ideas and, like, for structures and buildings and, like, settings and scenery, but I couldn't draw them at the time. So looking back, I mean, there's two things you can do. One is you do it to the best of your ability, right? And this is going to naturally just kind of like push you forward and forward and forward, even if you do it and you don't like it. It's better that you just try it, do it to the best of your ability, then you have that perhaps for later. Or write it down, describe it. You can describe things and you can see it in your mind perfectly, right? So if you have a really good idea for anything, just write it down. That's actually probably the best thing to do, I would say, if you don't feel like you can get it down on paper right at the beginning. Write down the description of it, like what are the key words? How does it feel? Is it a dark atmosphere or is it, is it a light atmosphere? Is it happy? Is it sad? Is it scary? Or is it bright? You know? And those are kind of like just kind of the same way of saying all those words. They're just uh, different words for saying the same thing, but you know what I mean. Is it futuristic or is it prehistoric? And I think that might be the best way to do it. You write it down and then you try over and over and over again. Be like, okay, is this scene hitting these words? Oh no, it needs to be a little bit more prehistoric. Let's get some fossils in there. Let's get some brontosauri in there. Tyrannosaurus, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, miracles will happen. All right, Aaron, talking about separating your journal into parts. This is a great question. I separate my journal into four different parts and the way that I separate the sections is with these little colored post-it notes. You can see them kind of sticking out the edge there, right? Now, the significance of these is I divide them into life, which is basically kind of your usual journal stuff. Hey, this happened to me today. I ran into this guy, I met him, and he's awesome. Uh, then I do goals. These are where I put all my checklists, as in get the immobile by my 26th birthday. That's in there now. Now it is. Somebody said I should put that in there. And now I've gone ahead and made the plan to get it. Uh, then you go business. If you're starting a business, you get ideas. Write down your ideas for business and how to bring more value to your customers in this area. And then wisdom, I think, is another really good part. These are the thoughts that you get. These, this is what happens when you hear somebody say something really awesome. You're like, oh, i got to remember that for later. You write it down in wisdom. Or say if you're into meditation, if you're just relaxing, thinking about your life, thinking about what is the purpose. What do I really want to accomplish uh, during my time here, right? When you get the answers to those, you get the profound thoughts, you write those down in wisdom. Because you'll go back and you'll read these, and sometimes you'll forget about stuff that you write in here, and it will come back and it will answer a problem that you're having at that point. Does that make sense? You write something in the past, it will serve you later in the future. And how terrible is it for people that don't have journals, that they have these thoughts, and then later when they have that problem, they can't look back and see that answer that they wrote down in the past. It's terrible. Terrible. I can't believe I was living a lot of my, like 90% of my life, I never had a journal. And now I finally have one, and I don't know how I could have ever lived without it. So, yes. <laughs> All right. Last question I'm going to take, coming in from Kilner. He's asking, will I make Emma t-shirts? And yes, I will be. I will be making Emma every, every possible thing that I can possibly think of to make with Emma on it. I can make action figures. If I can make them, I'm going to make it. I can make Emma soft drinks, fruit snacks, underwear. I'm making it, right? <laughs> T-shirts will be one of those things for sure. Probably a little bit earlier before lunch boxes and uh, all that other good stuff. Um, so, yeah, look forward to that. That's all coming up soon. But i got to figure out a better way to start shipping out physical media. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not too hard. i just got to figure out a way to, uh, what's the word, streamline it. So, yeah. All right, you people, thank you very much for joining me live once again on Ustream. People on YouTube, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My, name's, my name is Keenan Lafferty. <laughs> I, always get, I always get so excited at the end here because it's like, yes, music time, music time. Simultaneously clicking the music, saying the outro. Music, go. My name is Keenan Lafferty. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, you guys take care.